Here's just an absolutely astounding fact. Did you know that Franklin, Washington, and Madison all made it a law that religion and morality must be taught in all public schools in the United States? Well, they did. David Barton explains. These are some of the writings of the Founding Fathers, some of their beliefs. But did they actually believe they're strong enough to do something with it in public? Did they actually want these principles to be part of public policy? Were they willing to pass laws reflecting this? Well, for them, religion was much more than a matter of personal belief. It was a matter of public policy. You see, when we concluded the American Revolution, we governed ourselves under what were called the Articles of Confederation. They didn't particularly work well, but we limped through the revolution. Four years afterward, our government was falling apart. So we convened a group of men to revise the Articles of Confederation. And that didn't particularly work well, so they came out with a new document, which is the Constitution. That convention is now called the Constitutional Convention. Now, by creating that new document, they created a dilemma for themselves. For all the laws that they had passed in the many years under the Articles of Confederation were now set aside. The Constitution, the new government, had abolished the previous. So what did they do with all these laws? Well, there were many laws that they liked that they wanted under the new government, so they took and repassed them under the constitutional form of government. Now, one law that's of particular interest is the Northwest Ordinance because that was the law that they had earlier passed to tell you how you could become a state in the United States. If you were a territory, the Ohio Territory, the Mississippi Territory, any other territory, here's how you could become a state in the United States. It was very detailed, very specific, very tedious, full of requirements. You get this many people in your territory, you set up your government, etc. But the Founding Fathers liked that law so well that they repassed it so it would be pertinent under the U.S. Constitution. So the first House passed that law on the 17th of July, 1789. The first Senate repassed that law on the 4th of August, 1789, and George Washington put his signature on that law, on the new Northwest Ordinance, on the 7th of August, 1789. Now, that's an important time to understand. The 17th of July through the 7th of August, 1789. That is in the middle of the time that those identical men framed the First Amendment. The First Amendment, which the court now says means separation of church and state, the First Amendment was framed from the 7th of June to the 25th of September, 1789. And right in the middle of working on the First Amendment, the Founding Fathers passed the Northwest Ordinance. So what's the significance of that act? Article 3 of the Northwest Ordinance said that no new territory could become a state in the United States unless the schools in that territory were teaching religion and morality as well as knowledge. Now here's a law passed by the Founding Fathers that said, we won't let you in the United States unless your schools are teaching biblical principles. If you're not teaching that, you can't just teach knowledge and expect to get in here. We expect you to teach biblical principles in what you do. Now, this is a law that we see applied for decades after the Founding Fathers. This was not an obscure act. You see, every enabling act that was granted to states or territories to become states contains the provision that you can be admitted to the United States provided you can form a state constitution that is not repugnant to the principles of the Northwest Ordinance. And if you look at state constitutions across the decades, you take Ohio from 1803, or Mississippi from 1817, or Michigan from 1837, or Kansas from 1858, Nebraska 1875, plus many others, those state constitutions say, forever in the schools of this state, religion and morality will be taught as well as knowledge. And why was it in their state constitutions? Because a federal law passed by the Founding Fathers said you cannot get into these United States if you're not teaching religion and morality in your schools. If the Founding Fathers passed that law, how is it conceivable that those are the men who wanted to keep religious principles out? It's not. They believed so much in biblical principles that they took acts through federal laws to ensure that we would always have those principles in schools.